Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Take a look around you. Remove all of the filters and see the world for what it is. What you'll find is pain and suffering. You'll see a pandemic that's ravaged the entire planet. You'll see seething vitriol taking over our social and political discourse. You'll see wealth inequity at unprecedented levels. What you'll see is that the US national debt has hit a staggering $30 trillion. And that's just one factor in considering the cost of the military superiority of the United States. The climate doomsday clock is at 20 seconds to midnight. The damage is almost irreversible according to many experts in the field. Poverty is suffocating over a billion people worldwide. 34 million of them in America. And don't even get me started on politics and conflict and war and death and carnage. Humanity is like a rat in a labyrinth. We head in different directions, completely bewildered and dumbfounded as we reach for solutions to our problems. But we keep hitting brick walls. And it seems that every time we think we fixed one problem, we've created 10 more instead. It's like putting out one fire only to ignite others in its place. We're playing whack-a-mole on a global scale and we're losing. But even if we address all of the endemic issues, all of the systemic problems, we're still losing the moral battle as we continue to regress straight back into a mutated form of the jahiliya without even realizing it. What we need to understand, my dear brothers and sisters, at this critical juncture in time, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has confined the means of salvation to what he has delivered through the prophets and messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us the way. God, the creator of the universe, who knows us better than anybody, including ourselves. He has shown us the way by sending prophet after prophet, messenger after messenger, apostle after apostle. And by sending all of these messengers, he has given us the roadmap that we must use in order to salvage what's left of our humanity. He has shown us the way. And he has restricted, to the exclusion of all other solutions, he has restricted the means of salvation to these prophets. Look at the story of Nuh and his son. This is a story that we share with Christians and Jews and other faith traditions. Nuh sets out to create this ark. His son, who, would, who was a disbeliever, says to him that I have another solution in mind. What was his solution? He said, Sa'awi ila jabalin min al -ma. I have a mountain and I figured it all out. I am going to climb this mountain and it will save me from this flood. How bad could it be? A flood surely can't submerge an entire mountain. So I know what to do. I have my solutions. I don't need you to tell me how to live my life. I don't need God to dictate my lifestyle. I don't need prophets and messengers telling me what's right and what's wrong. Sound familiar? So he says to his father, I'm going to climb this mountain. What does Nuh say in response? He says, لا عاصم اليوم من أمر الله إلا من رحم. No one can be saved today from God's command. No one can find refuge other than the way that God has provided us, which is to board the ark. No one can be saved except those that he has bestowed his mercy upon, meaning those that follow the guidance of these prophets. It was at that point in the conversation that a wave came and separated between the two of them. And... Noah's son was among those that drowned. So, our prophet, the seal of messengers, then comes along and says, 
the example, the similitude of my family, my progeny, among you is like the ark of Nuh. Whoever boards this ark will find salvation, and whoever fails to do so will surely drown. He or she will perish. No matter what you think, no matter what solutions you can concoct for yourself, unless you board this ark, you will drown. The ark of the family of the Prophet And the single most important among them was Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salawatullah, wal malaika wal nas ajma'een, the commander of the faithful. Rasulullah left him for us to seek our salvation from. After all, the Holy Prophet said unequivocally, repeatedly, "Ana Madinatul Ilm wa Aliyun Babuha." I am the city of knowledge. If you want knowledge, knowledge isn't just about halal and haram. Although, of course, that is an integral and critical part of what knowledge is. Knowledge is a roadmap for life. Knowledge is how to navigate the rough seas of this life. Knowledge is how to save ourselves, to save humanity, to save the planet, to save whatever we have, the faculties that we've been endowed with. The Holy Prophet says, I am the city of knowledge. You want to know how to save yourselves. You want to know how to live as human beings. You want to be able to win these battles. Then you have to come to me. But there is a way that you need to enter. There is only one gate to the city of knowledge. أَنَا مَدِينَةُ الْعِلْمِ وَعَلِيٌّ بَابَهَا وَعَلِيٌّ بَابَهَا فَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْمَدِينَةَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ فَلْيَأْتِهَا مِنْ بَابِهَا Ali is the gate to this city. So whoever wants the knowledge, whoever wants wisdom, whoever wants solutions to these endemic, systemic, debilitating problems must come through the gate of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Our problems are paradoxical in nature. Our problems won't be solved unless we enter the city of knowledge through the gate that's been prescribed, that's been appointed to us. Amir al-Mu'mineen himself says, whoever seeks a path other than that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely perish. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam his son, he says in dua Arafah, خسرت صفقة عبد لم تجعل له من حبك نصيبا the contract that is between us and anybody other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a losing contract. It is going to be a source of regret and remorse. Brothers and sisters, the pandemic was a wake-up call for humanity to revert to God and to seek those solutions from Him. And yet, it was a missed opportunity. It was something that we could have utilized to our benefit, but we missed out. We looked straight into the abyss and said, no, 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 we'll take care of our problems. We, have a ref we will seek refuge in a mountain. We will seek refuge in a vaccine. We will seek refuge in government bailouts. We will seek refuge in the United Nations. We will seek refuge in this or that. But at the end of the day, لا عاصم اليوم من أمر الله no one can protect us from the afflictions that have come to us as a result of our own actions other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, why do I say all of this? If the solution lies in following the example of Ali ibn Abi Talib, if Imam Ali is the only recourse for us to be salvaged, then we need to learn what Ali did what Ali said, the positions that Ali took, and we need to follow his example. Number one, we need to learn from Ali ibn Abi Talib that God is the only person we need to please. That God is the only entity that we need to be concerned about, not other people. Our aim in life shouldn't be to make as many friends as possible. Our aim in life should not be to please and appease others. Our aim in life is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali had all the virtues and qualities 
required to be the most popular person in the entire universe. And yet, he could not care less about attracting people's respect and admiration. Ali did not seek popularity. He is the most popular person. The love and respect we have for Ali ibn Abi Talib is unparalleled. People from all walks of life, all faiths, all colors, all creeds. And it's precisely because Ali didn't want that. Ali, Ali didn't look for that. Ali ibn Abi Talib sought to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody else. That's number one. Number two, if there is one word that defines the character of Ali, it was justice and it was kindness. Justice tempered with kindness, not absolute justice. Absolute justice when it came to facing the oppressors, yes. But when it came to other people, it was about mercy. It was about kindness. It was about generosity. It was about philanthropy. It was about charity. It was about showing them the kind of mercy that would attract them to the truth, that would bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same justice and mercy that we need to implement in our lives. In our lives, as people who are married to our spouses, our marital lives should be defined by justice tempered with mercy, by knowing the rights and responsibilities, but also going above and beyond. That we shouldn't be self-centered. It's not about us. This life is about compromise. It's about, it's about sacrifice. It's about looking after other people. It's about showing mercy to other people, especially those who are closest to us, our spouses our parents, our relatives, our children, our siblings, right? The kind of justice and mercy we seek from Ali ibn Abi Talib and his example that we should implement in our communities, that we should implement in our families, that we should implement in our tribes and the wider society, as well as the level of uh, governments and nations and countries at large. May Allah bless you all. It is an honor and a privilege to have participated in this global conference. I hope and my prayer is that we use this opportunity and others like it to learn about Amir al muminin and to follow in his footsteps, to read Nahj al balagha to read the works and sayings and sermons and letters of Ali ibn Abi Talib and not just be content with having him as some kind of a symbol that represents us or someone that we're proud of but we don't actually follow or try to emulate. I send my peace and blessings upon the organizers as well as all of those who participated in this uh, event and putting it all together. May Allah bless you all. Uh, we pray for the reappearance of our master, the savior, the true embodiment of Amir al-Mu'mineen in this time and in this age. Insha'Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.